Life. you. I like you. So I do the fucking fast chassis stream. Live down. Yeah. <laughs> you want to pop it right here? Let me see what happens. Yeah. Of course he does. All right, we're going. everything kind of set up guys extra large extra long info to uh, intro today so first of all thank you guys so much for joining us uh we were actually having fun pre-show uh a lot of stuff to cover today a lot of goodies laid out here uh we were talking about our anniversaries and stuff like that and we missed our our, our one-year anniversary we were so entrenched in all of it so anniversaries already passed a couple months ago believe it or not and we've already done over 40 something episodes so it's going to be a blast but more importantly and uh more fun to this whole episode and you guys are gonna have a lot of fun with it today but we we sit down with mp long timer lifer fast jesse harden years, buddy 10 years 10 years of grinding it out but uh i think it's an important episode today for us and 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 this really is a chance for jesse and and myself to just sit down and talk about a lot of the products that people probably forget that we either have or don't know we have and what we've got to offer and some of the stuff that's coming down the pipeline. So a lot of new stuff, on the team. you know, with, with what we're doing here and, and Jesse, so Jesse, myself, Rick Sadler are part of the, uh, we call it the ideation team. And it's kind of the brain trust of MP going forward of, of what we're looking at doing, right, Jess, and kind of bringing into the new items and really where we want to bring it for the future for sure so what are i mean what do you feel i mean that's pretty an open book really <laughs> it's like there's some of the stuff we could talk about some yeah, of the stuff we can't talk about way. but I mean, there's a lot, of, a lot of new stuff coming out of the pipe you know a lot of industry first stuff that nobody's done before parts that are obsolete that we're having made i mean yep. there's a lot of key items that you can't even find anymore that we have uh in the works 
Yeah. Yeah. And then, and, and that's, that's a, that's a, such a point that we're trying to drive home today. So this, this show guys is really devoted to you, the, the, the end user, the consumer, um, you know, obviously for the shops to give some more input. Sometimes you people forget about some of the products that we have. I mean, we don't, we can only do so much in our, our monthly sales flyer for the, for the wholesale yeah, departments. Know, new but, catalogs coming, but until that catalog gets here, yeah, you know, we're uh, kind of, uh, winging it with the social media post and the uh, sales flyer leading up to our, you know, our, our customer base to get the news out there. Yeah. So we, we do our best to, to launch everything as best we can because it's easiest and, and to do it through social media. And then we follow that up with sales flyers and specials to the host. So, but on the front end of it for you guys, you know, that, that watch the show, I mean, there's thousands of you guys that watch the show every month. This is your chance to really sit down to ask some questions, stuff that we want to do stuff that, where we want to build or stuff that you guys want us to build. I mean, one of the things we have, one of our great customers that, that brought a couple of products to mind and, and uh, we did our own investigation, right. With some of the f products to be fabricated uh, for the future. Oh, yeah, and, sure. and yeah, we take input from everybody. We take input from the end users. We take input from our wholesale customers. I mean, if there's a void in the market, there's a part that needs to be developed or even an OEM part that's obsolete or hard to find. I mean, we're more than willing to go out there and make it. You know? So we've got just a little snippet of just some random pieces that are, somewhat new um some of them have been here a little bit while for a few months but a lot of it just not yeah, out like those lug nuts right there i mean those things are pretty cool and uh nobody really knows about them i mean they're buried in the 500 page 2018 catalog <laughs> but i mean i don't know if you guys can get this on camera but this is a, Got that one right there you know 12 point aluminum lug nut we offer them three different ways we do a uh, silver chrome and black we do them 12 millimeter 14 millimeter 60 degree taper ball seat i mean so any wheel you have you know, you can adapt this uh, lug nut to your car. Yeah. And uh, and plus we have them black and silver. Yeah. So we have all the finishes, but I mean, they're pretty trick. I mean, before the only way you could get these was ultra high dollar titanium and they were a million bucks, but you know, we brought them out and we made them affordable. But like I said, they never really caught on because I don't think people know we have them, but they're a, uh, they're a pretty awesome item. I mean, and it's lightweight just, too. Yeah. Super lightweight. I mean, the finish is good. Nice black anodized finish. I mean, they're, they're cool. Some of you guys have seen something similar to this on Henry's car. Yeah. That's actually and, where we got the idea from, I mean, <laughs> to be honest with you. Yeah, it, but it's it's just, it's a cool, simple, but yet different thing to yeah, just you, add it you to. You don't spend a ton of money, you can change the look of your car. I mean, everybody's tired of the same old, you know, chrome acorn lug nut on yeah. their car. You know, this gives your car a new look. I mean, and they, they come in chrome. I mean, they're silver, they're chrome. You can get them in the bare silver, and as many color you want. Yep. And then you have them in the, the regular the ball style. You have them in the Porsche taper. Yep, 12 millimeter, 14 millimeter. So we, we covered all bases. So, I mean, and again, guys, this, this episode is the devoted for you guys. So this is your chance to kind of see some of the things that we've worked on, some of the stuff we've actually sourced. And that's one of the things that, you know, here at MP, we're, we're able to go out search. Now we're really sourcing better components, better sourcing, not, you know, whether it's overseas or domestically. Yeah, we're willing to buy from anywhere, like the partnership with Angle again. Yeah, the partnership that's a great, with Willwood. A great I mean, we're willing to go everywhere and anywhere to keep you guys you know, stock up. So who would have ever thought you just saw the Ingle box back in an empty in the empty warehouse? It's back. So Ingle boxes, all the popular grinds, empty tag on it. Like I said, we stock more angle cams than anybody. Like I said, before we uh you know lost the relationship with Angle, we were yeah. the biggest angle dealer in the world and we'll be on our way back to that status, yep, you know, before there. you know it. I mean, and that's that's really just part of the last eighteen months that that uh the transition has taken over. Um, and to really push forward to kind of some of the stuff that, that, uh, that we're actually starting to finally see. And again, there's so there's probably what 500 pieces or some of that neighborhood of all the different things that we're working on oh, yeah. that are at some stage of either design, development, drawing, print, whatever. I mean, we're going to start showing you guys some of these other things here and it gives you guys an opportunity, by the way, if you do see something that you want some more input on or construction on or a different angle, let us know. I mean, we have the mobile camera now, so you'll be able to move a little bit around. We'll, we're doing our best to make sure we show you everything, but it's, this is one of the ones that I always crack up on. Cause I know this is like your baby. Yeah. This is one of them. This so. is one of the ones that I had developed that we made. I mean, it was out there before, but Ampy didn't have it. We sold probably over a thousand seat belts in one year. We didn't have the insert to adapt it to the, you know, early sixties cars. You know, I remember my first car was a 64 bug and I had to go buy these from BFY to get my seatbelts on because I bought my car and it didn't have seatbelts, yeah. you know, so these have been around forever. But I mean, yeah, this is the item that we had made and we have thousands of them. But like I said, there's thousands of cars out there that need them. Like I said, it didn't make yeah. sense for me. Why does MP have every seatbelt under the sun? But we don't have all the parts yeah, the you need to put in your and, car. And that's really what I think 
the we're, same really, thing. Um, you didn't bring them out here, but it's during the fender bolt kits. Right yeah, there. you know, that's the proper fender bolt. We started carrying sheet metal yeah, again. Because you can you see that the size of the head is what's, what's yeah, that's what makes them special. So, I mean, that's why the Germans engineered them this way thicker head, you can get the wrench on them when you're yeah. putting the fenders on, you know, the appropriate, you know, quote unquote fender washer, you know, so it holds the fender on there tight. But I mean, we have these, you know, it didn't make sense. I'm going through the catalog, and even the you guys don't know if you can see in the camera, but there's actually a a, 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 a shape to that washer, it's not just perfectly yeah, flat. It's concave. So, it's these are some of the things that, yeah, they're made right. We're really focusing on kind of plugging the yeah, holes in our gaps, line, you know. Yeah. We're going to carry fenders, but we don't carry, <laughs> we got holes. fenders, we got fender beating, we, we got, got seatbelts, <laughs> we don't have all the parts you need to put the seatbelts in the car. So, we're just trying to fill the gaps. I mean, that's kind of what we've been doing for the last year and a half, but there's still a lot of holes in our line i mean we are the biggest you know and i consider ourselves the best supplier out there but there's still hundreds of parts you would need to go source elsewhere if you're building a car from the ground up and that's part of the reason why we're building the rag top downstairs yep. so we can kind of see what you guys are seeing what do we need what does empty not have that we need to start you know sourcing you know yeah what? so you guys have heard that project and you guys saw a couple of snippets on on social media which will probably kick off right around the first of the year now just with the time constraints of the catalog and whatnot but we have a beautiful 63 rag top it's just a painted shell. It's going to be a driver. It's definitely not a showstopper by any means, but it's a driver that'll be built from our empty catalog, whether it be from, you know, uh, suspension components to engine components to, you know, everything we can do. And, and, and then hopefully join some new partnerships with some. We'll get some good parts from some good suppliers. You know, when it comes time to do the engine, we might have somebody help us out. We might do it in house, you know, transmission will probably come from Rancho or right gearbox. I mean, so we'll, we'll make sure we partner with some of yeah. our good customers and, you know, use as many empty products as we can. That's Absolutely. Sure. You know, here's another one, you know, German throat bearings. For the last 10 years I worked here before, you know, we were acquired by Dubin Clark. We didn't carry a German throat bearing. All we carried was just the Chinese Econo version. Mm -hmm. you know? But why should you have to go somewhere else to buy a quality part? If you want the best part, you should be able to buy it from Empty. So we've been carrying those for about a year and a half, two years. We've sold them. Yeah. Now, again, not that it, not that the necessarily the Chinese parts are bad. I mean, uh, we've, I've run, I've run the, I mean, not for the, the my cars are rocket ship or anything. <laughs> I run them in, in, in our, in our off road cars yeah. and they're holding up. We're beating the shit up. We're clutch kicking them out of the corners. We're doing everything in there. They hold up just yeah. fine. I mean, I know you guys have used some of the pressure plates. You've used some of the Chinese ball joints in the class. I mean, the Chinese stuff works, but if you're a purist and you want the best part available, yeah. you should be able to buy it from him. Well, and that's, that's just, no we're giving why. you guys now more options. And I think that's some of the biggest thing is we're giving you, we, we're making it to one stop call. Yeah. So if you're, you know, whether you're a, a parts house distributor or you're, you're buying through, you know, one of our dealers around the globe, you can literally say, Oh, I'd rather, you know, I'd want the sax uh, throw out bearing and I want the, the sax uh, pressure plate, but I uh, give me that Dakin disc or the, whatever it may be. We yeah, have those are some of the key parts that uh, we were able to bring in as soon as, uh, you know, the transfer of ownership, you know, we started going to the higher quality stuff, Dakin disc, we carry both of them, you know, the aggressive one and the standard one. We started uh, carrying the genuine Kennedy four pucks and six pucks again. I mean, we sold like 26 pucks last month because of sand season. Everybody loves the 200 millimeter six pucks in the sand rails. Yeah. You know, I mean, stuff's we just got a couple of requests to pull it out of the uh, box there. The, the what do they want to see? They want to see the ZF throw out bearing? Yeah. All right. This is a early throw out bearing. 111-141-165A. <laughs> if you guys want the late model number, that's a 113-141-165B. But uh, yeah, this is it right here. Genuine sacks. They're not exactly like the uh, ones that came over from Germany, but they still get the job done. I mean, there were a couple things changed. You know, the uh, You're good. inserts are plastic now, but I mean, like I said, nothing's like it was 40 years ago, but they still get the job done and, you know, they last for sure. So you could tell the quality's there. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's, you know, along with that, I mean, we're kind of while we're on that same uh, kick, um, God, somebody's messing with the air conditioning again. It drives me nuts. <laughs> it's cold in here, man. That's what the, the jacket uh, on. The L, the L ring stuff, and that's another another cool brand that uh, that we brought yeah, in. Yeah, we um, this was like a water box or a gasket. So yeah, it looks like to me. But that's a full complete. Even gasket comes to, with the Durco. Yep. But yeah, we carry the full line of L ring. We're direct with L ring. I mean, we have probably, I would say, three to four hundred L ring numbers. You know, a lot of numbers people don't know about I mean, we have basic you know valve cover gaskets for some of your early water pumpers that we're trying to get into that market but they haven't really been moving out here too crazy but we got some 911 stuff 914 yeah. stuff i mean full line distributor for l ring so if you're a even, dealer even diesel stuff yeah you some diesel if you're a stuff. dealer and you're uh, watching you know hit up your salesperson for uh you know early water cool stuff we have hundreds of parts that uh they're moving but you know i don't think you guys realize we have them because so many people depend on that printed catalog yeah 
like I said, we have a big catalog in the works, but it's going to be a few more months before it's ready. But once that catalog comes out, I'm sure you guys will start start buying more. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's the biggest thing is bringing everything kind of updated um, and and to the current look, you know, contemporary vibe and more of a good feel. A um, couple of things too that uh, we're just going to kind of continue to show you guys stuff. And if you guys have questions on these things, make sure you continue to put them through. We can go through the table here. I mean, we have uh, this kind of ties into. Uh, that bug pack skin card, if you can hand me that one. So a lot of people don't know. I don't think we've made it super well known, but we are an XRP dealer now. We have been for the last few months. So we yep. brought back uh, some of the fuel line kits that bug pack used to do. Bug pack would do, uh, you know, steel braided. These are the black hoses, but quality XRP, you know, fittings. Plenty of fuel line T fitting. So this is a little kit that we did a couple months ago. Yeah, and that that, that that's that's that kit specifically is for like IDA. Uh, EPC setup, yeah, so it comes with the adapter fittings for the top of the carburetor and everything. So that's a great setup. And that's just we, another example. So now we offer that, guys. We offer that in 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 stainless steel uh, and in the black. So it'll be stainless steel with the red and blue ends. Exactly. Uh, you know XRP fittings, and then with the T fittings, we also offer it at the black, like you saw here. But more importantly, we offer a line of oil oil cooler kits. Excuse me, uh, full flow kits. With your adapter and your filter, your base. filter base, the whole deal. Um, we're offering breather setups now with it as yep. well. So we have these kits available. Yeah. All XRP you got to do is ask. I mean, we have probably over two to 3,000 XRP fittings on the shelf. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we yeah. went pretty large when we did the buying. And then this fitting right here is what you need to get the fuel out of your gas tank. So this is a JC part that Jack developed. We have them in uh, Dash 6, Dash, dash 8, 8, and, dash, and 10. dash 10 for you big turbo guys. But you know, it's got that's the right seal JC4580. here. Yeah. You know, and, uh, some of the other adapters on the market use an O-ring, which always ends up pinching and leaking. This is an actual gasket yeah, flat that gasket. we found with our testing is uh, pretty resistant to failure. So these uh, haven't leaked on us yet, and we've uh, we've tested them quite a bit. So I, I would say this is the best adapter set up out there with the gasket. That's and you know what's funny, man? I think a lot of people just forget about those little things, or they've gotten so used to just running a little fuel line. It's like, or, or you, you're still learning to things and you're like, oh, I just don't see it. Like, this is a simple fix for a yeah. lot of people's problems. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, a lot of guys, what we used to do, like on my old blue car, I mean, I took the gas tank and I tapped it for quarter inch and I had to adapt a fitting that would leak and put Loctite. I mean, this just makes it simple. You take out your stock fitting off, you put this on, you're done. Yeah, and it's it's the right and pitch it's and compact, thread. It's, so you got enough room between the tunnel to put a 90 on there. I mean, everything about it is right. You know, we made it as short as we could. We put the right gasket in it. We put a big neural on so it's easy to just put a wrench on it and tighten it up and use it so so uh chris wink just oh, chimed in and says uh says cb o-ring did exactly what you said what happened to that's it. why it's, this one works see you know and it's not like we're trying to get in here and bash or anything no. else it's just one of those things that we're, we want to we want to make stuff better i mean yeah there i mean cb wasn't the first one to make this fitting we weren't the first one to make this fitting but you know what we made it the best we could we made it work you know jack came to me for some input i gave it to him and you know like I said, I think it's the best part out there. And we make it in-house, yep. which is really cool. And, and again, you know, what we're trying to give you guys here with the show is just, again, another little snippet of behind the scenes of the stuff that we're doing on a daily basis. When you call for Jesse and he's tied up in a meeting on Wednesdays yeah, you and Thursdays, why. you know where we're at. Because, I mean, we do these ideation meetings or these brain trust meetings. It's a few hours a week. Yeah, and it's twice, I mean, twice a week. I mean, it's I, mean I had input on this. I did a big part of the angle that, you know, the sax deal was something we engineered other you know as a team you know the fender bolts i mean a lot of the stuff on this table is stuff that we did since i got here so. and it, it, the one thing is you know, the stuff takes time yeah. you know like what we'll, well, we'll talk about the take, valve so let's talk about taking Hand time me that valve cover. <laughs> so this valve cover is kind of my baby and uh i thought about doing this after the sema show in 2018 18. so one of the moroso reps came in here in november you know jessica chance came in here sat down with me and uh told her my idea i said look i want to do a sheet metal vw valve cover so she came in, we had one meeting, she came back, I gave her a cylinder head, rockers, a couple of our existing empty valve covers, you know, sent everything back there to Moroso and let them start engineering it. But it was just, you know, it took a long time. It took almost two years to get this thing from starting point to finish. Yeah, know? the first product on the shelf was almost you know, two so years. So stuff doesn't happen overnight. I mean, we made a few changes, you know, some of the heights weren't right. We made it as deep as we could to give you maximum clearance. We, uh actually share the same o-ring with the jc valve cover so it's a little bit interchangeable it's all tig welded 
We ended up with the bung. The original ones had a fitting welded on yeah. it. But I said, hey, let's do a bung. That way you can go from dash 8, dash 10, even dash 12 if you're running a big vacuum pump or something crazy. But yeah, I mean, we put a lot of time with this. I mean, we have about three of these, you know, cut in half so we could check the uh, rocker well, clearance clearances, else. The, I mean, the so, bosses for the hardware that they're right, yeah. you know, clearance between the rocker shaft yeah. and so all this stuff took a long time. Bus. I mean, we engineered some of it ourselves too. I mean, we actually sent Moroso the tool path on this O ring. I mean, we, we did a lot of work ourselves too. I mean, just all that. So. Yeah, we even changed the heights more than once just yeah. for uh, ratio clearance. Exactly. You know, so we end up settling with the dash eight bung. Originally, it was going to be a dash 10, but it was kind of big. So, I mean, there's a lot of work that went yeah. into And I mean, guys, we understand they're not cheap either. But if you want something you want unique, something one of a kind that nobody else has, I mean, this is pretty new to the VW market. I mean, I've seen sheet metal valve cover on an autocraft head before but i had never seen one on a uh, vw head before. yeah you know and there's been billet ones you know there's a couple other guys making billet ones jack makes a billet one well even the taper towards the top too i mean there's it's just different re- it's there's reasons for things why we did things there's, yeah uh, there's i mean a lot we of did fun. a lot of testing we put a pair on henry's car you know the prototype models and he drove a few hundred miles to make sure they weren't leaking to make sure they cleared the body i mean these things weren't just developed overnight I yeah. mean, a lot of testing hell we saw them we saw them in uh hot vw's magazine damn near a year ago at yeah. their sema recap special yeah. so i mean that was a prototype <clears> but you know, but it's just it's just again it's just one of the things that we're working on yeah, we're just and, trying to do different stuff that nobody's done before but, i mean so we'll go we'll go from a valve cover you know which again is is not a uh a cheap little piece of jewelry but we've also gone to the stock side of things with like the crankshaft well yeah here's a common one right here so we like everybody else in the industry we were importing a cheap cast stock crank you know and you know they were they were they're just the basic crank i mean they weren't too pretty to look at they weren't super yeah. strong but they would actually go back in your 1600 and run for another 10 or 20 years but people were complaining the finish wasn't great they weren't strong we can't race with them we can't do this with them. so then you know we developed this right here it's a uh stock 69 millimeter crank you know basically the same dimensions as the uh, German forged crank. It's forged as well, made by the same supplier as our uh, counterweight of 69 crank. But everybody asked for it and we built it. You know, they wanted something that was comparable to a German 69 millimeter crank. And a lot of these guys that are building these uh, stock engines, especially over in Europe, they don't want to put a counterweight crank in. So they wanted a, you know, a stock crank, but forged. So we did it, you know, they're, they're selling. I think there might be one in a white car that's driving around in the dirt once in a while. Yeah, I mean that's the crank that we use in in the class eleven stuff and yeah. the class nines. We, I mean, these are, I, I, I mean, I think even major performance even. Yeah, now we've sold so quite a few. There's of them. a lot of these I mean, out there. Uh, they're modeled right after a German crank, same oiling holes. You know, I mean, they're balanced. I mean, they're, they're nice. You know, uh, the only thing that we didn't do that I thought about doing is eight dial in them, but we might actually come out with a uh, another part number for an eight dial one. So if you guys want to see an eight dialed forge crank let us know and we'll get it done yeah that's a great point i mean it's, it's on it's been the topic of discussion so yeah. you know you guys you you can you can actually create your own part number here today if you guys send us a couple of dms say look man create that crank but do it as an eight dial we have the fixture we have the machine shop yeah we can we, do it yeah we here. might just do a dozen of them put them on the shelf with a new number and see if they sell but that's kind of been uh talked to a few engine builders like chico performance and he said he'd buy a few if they were eight dial but he just doesn't want to get it and have to put time in it so maybe if we do it here we can uh, get them out there yeah they're moving like i said i mean it's the best crank you can get if you're building a bone stock 1600 and you don't want to put an inferior cast crank in there well we got one two three four five comments already coming through the say eight dollar yeah so i I think think, i mean that was i mean (laughs) when i was part of the team i mean i had a little bit of help developing this one i wanted to go eight dollar and then other people had input that you know let's just keep it just like stock you know i value their opinion so we tried it but I think if we go eight Dell, we'll move a few more of them. Yeah. So just keep your eye out, guys. There'll be an eight Dell crank available coming soon. Well, since we're kind of on the off road, let's talk about this thing right here. Yeah. So this is a rear torsion adjuster for a VW torsion housing. This one is really nice. It's USA manufactured. Chromoly, TIG welded. Chromoly, TIG welded. It's actually laser cut and beveled. So like on a stock pan car, um, and these are what you guys saw us installing downstairs. The the sleeve actually will go right over. It, I mean, it's it's what do you very. Think this will look like in the brute beast. I know. Yeah, I hear that, things. That, that car is uh, pretty stock, man. Stock spring <laughs> plates. I mean, I can't afford adjustable, so maybe I'll put this in. This thing. Yeah, and uh, so these are available now for your your off road guys, your drag guys, whatever you want to do. You put a little preload in your uh, torsion. Yeah, it's nice. Like I said, like on the uh, 
a blue car I race, I mean, the tire size that we run in the real street class is right up on the spring plate. So I don't have room for a adjustable spring plate if I wanted to put it on. So to keep that car aligned, I have to pull the back end apart about once a year and re-index the torsions to keep her going straight. But this would make it. Yeah, just get under there with an Allen and yeah. <laughs> an eight an M eight Allen and yeah, and we have one on uh, Anthony's turbo car when I used to help him out. Man, it was easy. I mean, we check it every day. I mean, every time we go to the track because we tow the car from here to SAC, yeah. things change, you know. So it's nice. But yeah, these are these are uh, available, um, and and they are available just as a sleeve now. We still got to get the, the fingers? fingers. Not the fingers aren't in yet, so we got to okay. work on still uh, getting the fingers in there because we want to bring in a good chromoly finger as well. Um, that way they don't, that's the number one failing part, uh, on the off-road cars. The fingers start to yeah. just strip out on that fine thread over time. I so to, I'm going to see if Jay, see if it makes sense. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, definitely. We'll probably something. machine it here out of Chrome Molly, then send it to the brooch guy and get it broached. So. Yeah. I got some connections. Some of his brothers might be able to broach them too. So we could talk about that in our next meeting. But well, I mean, while we're talking off-road too, we actually do. And these are, these guys, nobody's even seen these yet. Yeah. This product this was the first time I, and this is the, I mean, this box. is, uh, one, we have several different styles, but this is one of the off-road air boxes. So for you guys with your Baja bugs or your, your doom buggies, your rail buggies, and you're out playing in the dirt, we do have the boxes available. Fit your regular uh, HPMX is a IDF setup. Yeah, I won't fit a Delorto with that. Yeah. HPMX or IDF. For sure. Yep. And then uh, we have three inch and four inch inlets. We also have the twin inlet on the sides as well. So those are totally available. These are also USA made right here. Hand created, hand done, hand welded, and in stock and ready for shipping. They have the velocity stacks inside, and uh, this is what you're going to see pretty much any off road car out there today is running that stuff. So these are just a few of the items. Um, one of the questions came through right now too. Will those uh, valve covers clear early cars too? I know it's tight with a stroker motor. Um, we had them on a '67. There's a little bit of room. I mean, if you're talking about a 1600 width engine, you know, so even up to a 2276, if you're using a stock length rod, I think you'll be pretty close. But it's not any bigger than uh, like a bug pack valve cover. You know, it's probably smaller than like the MPC channels. I mean, it's it's a little bit taller than a stock valve cover, but not much. I mean, it's pretty compact. So you'd be, you'd be pretty surprised. Once I get the blue beast back together, it's a 65. We're going to try some on it. See how it goes. Yeah, there's another one. Should, I would instantly change over to an eight now. Yeah. So, I mean, you got, I'd love seeing this stuff. This is yeah, the I mean, great. That's why we brought it on here because we had kind of sat down a couple weeks ago and I said, hey, if we ate Dow, these will probably take off even yeah. more than they are now. And now that you guys are actually letting us know, I think that's uh, some good input. Misty chiming in. <laughs> Misty? <laughs> Misty's chiming in. How VW? Used to offer, but you guys never stocked the rest of the complete of the set. We need new torsion bars too. Torsion bars well, uh, might have some of our might sleeve have on that something one. up the sleeve again. That it just one, takes time. Uh, I don't know, man. That was discussed last week, so that could be some big news on that. Again, one. and and the, uh, we talk about it like these shows. It's a, it's the show is an outlet to give you a, a list, the sneak peek of once we know, once we have kind of a product confirmed, we've seen our first article samples. We kind of given it the seal of approval after it's testing and it's R and D side of stuff. Like there's stuff right now that's get you know that's here. Oh, yeah. It's still got to be tested uh, about three pounds or something down there. On a <laughs> big project that's going down. So that's going to be a, a huge one. So, it, it, but it's this a way for us to kind of give you a little snippet to, Hey, once we've kind of approved it, we know we're going to make it. We're probably going to talk about it on here yeah. and we want to launch this stuff uh, between on here and to kind of vocalize it. Cause a picture you see just, Oh, a picture on social media. It doesn't well, allow us to really out. talk about stuff. So, so here's one that everybody's been asking for. I mean, we've sold, swivel foot adjusters for you know years but we didn't have the best adjusters on the market so we uh actually got all of the old source that was making them for bug pack and these are the 911 what you consider an elephant's foot style and we've sold a few hundred of these i mean they're moving but we put them under the bug pack brand since they're actually the same supplier the bug pack was using so these are selling they're not much more than what uh we sold the empty ones for so you get a lot of value there and uh, those are race proven i think you put them in the class 11 yeah i mean and we're we're beating them up but there there are people that are using them i mean they're, they're using them they're they're working well again one of the things we stress is you know a lot of people talk about jesse on the show or i ask always about the, the quality of this and that or where we got stuff i was like now we're going back to some of the bug pack like you mentioned the bug pack original you know, screw yeah, like machine the plays, cranks, or the, you know, flange you know crank. those came from the original bug pack supplier yeah you know, so did the the cylinders you know the Cylinders that we sell at MP under the Bug Pack brand are actually, you know, Rev Master cylinders, which are, 
you know, many people think are the best 94 millimeter long cylinders you can get. I mean, so we're trying to go back to the original bug pack quality or better. I mean, those fittings are better than what bug packs will. Bug pack use a lot of earls and they'd bounce back and forth with Fregola. But I mean, XRP is known as the best fitting you can buy. So, yeah. you know, when we decided to go back to doing fittings. We went to the best you can get your hands on. So we got, I've seen this comment now come through three times from the same person. And again, I'm trying to watch them. Uh, and this isn't the first time we've heard this. It <laughs> says, bring back the super flows. That is, that is. Kind of in the works <laughs> right now. You know, we, uh, I don't want to say too much, but we've uh, been uh, doing some hiring downstairs in the machine shop, you know, because the way the super flow works is we own the molds, we own the tooling, but once the head's cast, it's got to come here. It needs to get put in a machine. It needs to be a machine. So, yeah. of course, you need a four axis or better machine to machine it. You need a programmer because all the bug pack programs are in the bug pack CNC, which we don't own. So, you know, we have to put a little bit of time into that. But I would venture to say there will be super flow heads on the shelf probably by summer. Safe bet. Yeah. You know. And I mean, that's going to be in a variety of combinations, yeah. we'll just say. Or may not have CNC ported versions. <laughs> may or may not be doing a little different valve guide spread. Might be 50 millimeter intake valves. You never valve. know. Might be coming with manly valves. I don't know. It's just, <laughs> just rumors right now. A lot, a lot of, uh, a lot of fun dropping things, you know. But uh, as we say, shifting gears into a different realm, we kind of in that stock realm. Let's talk about those wires. These are another product that people kind of, I think, people just take it for granted, or they just adapt with something cheesy or don't yeah, work so you know a few years ago bosch quit making the 09001 they replaced it with a bar that was made in mexico which could people, pull them out of the bag people of the bag. you know weren't too happy with so you know under the old ownership ampy you know made some wires that were basically a clone of the bosch 09001s you know the same ends same resistance. I mean, you put these on an ohmmeter. I mean, everything on these wires matches up to Those are the T3s yeah, too. These are the T3s matches up to the original Bosch wire. And then a few months ago, you know, we've been asked for these a few times. It's the uh, 09003 set, which is basically real similar lengths on your one, two, three, and four, but your coil wire is a little bit longer. So if you got a you know off road car, sand rail. Maybe one of those cool trikes like Corey rides to work once in a while. You know, and you that's got, a wheelie machine, yeah, man. Yeah. You know, so you get this longer coil wire, and you know, we sell them for a couple bucks more, but I mean, it's real great value. But this is the 09003 replacement, which we do have in the works. I'll go ahead and spill the beans. We are working on the uh, 09004s too. Yep. We just haven't got those finished, but those will be coming here pretty soon. I mean, basically, we're just trying to fill the void where, uh, Bosch dropped the ball. I mean, there's so many things that Bosch has just quit making. Like the Bosch AL82 alternator, they're not making it. We've been trying to buy Bosch alternators. We've had them on order for six months to a year. We can't get them to do them. We don't even know if they're going to make them anymore. The uh, Bosch SR15 and starter, you know, we haven't been able to get those for a while. I mean, so there's a lot of issues. You know, I mean, what it is is just Bosch doesn't care. I mean, the market is so small to them that they just don't care if they ever make it again or not. You know, so it's up to us to fill the voids and keep it going for you. Which kind of force us to do some stuff, you know, these are low resistant. Um, I mean, these are a very, very good quality yeah, the wire. They're, are, they're, on par wire. With a, yeah. they're on par with a Bosch yeah. wire. I mean, we consider these a made in USA part. I mean, the wire itself is made in USA core. Some of the, you know, little fittings are made in China, but I mean, for the most part, this is a USA made part. We actually cut the wires here. We crimp them here. We assemble them here. So this is something that we do in house. I mean, if you've had a tour here, we have about a, right. 40 by 20 foot area down there that's just wires i mean we make yeah. hundreds of wire sets a week here maybe more yeah so from what i gather we make around 150 wire sets a day yeah with them and then on top of it we have to buy the wire in, in a large spool oh, yeah. so we buy it in fifty thousand yard spool so when you guys get a chance to take a tour here you'll, you'll probably the see the wire spools just you know, we got an old machine that works really well. It's a set it and forget it kind of machine, and it runs off the single length. And then we'll, uh, we have a group that our dude that just kills it on the wire assembly. So we keep them busy back there. Heck yeah. No, but wires are big. I mean, we sell a lot of them. Misty's <laughs> asking for Taylor Spyro 8 Mills. It's Taylor wires. You probably want them in purple too, right, Misty? <laughs> yeah. She was yeah. asking for some funny colors last time. Yeah, and the problem that we've seen with those, or I've seen with those, is just the feedback. Like, if you have a stereo, the issues, stuff like that, yeah. we see yeah. it. We carry a couple, but she wants a couple more. But it's possible. We might have Ryan. Lime green and 
purple. No, you've seen her website. Those are her colors. <laughs> She's getting some love today on the show and some shout outs. So, WWW. Misty <laughs> is a good customer, man. I've had it. Well, I used to have her account and she's grown quite a bit. Man. She went from a small customer to one of our probably top 20 customers. I mean, so she's very she's cool in the hard work and growing that company for sure. Johnny Jalopy chiming in. Dang it. I just bought some new wires. Got to get some. Yeah. Well, we got you, man. We got you. Good stuff. One wow. That would be super cool. Super close again. What uh, refresh me there, Mr. Lucas hand on what you're asking about. I don't quite understand. Uh, yeah, I got a question real quick. Um, are those wires offered with the MSD cap ends by any chance? No, not at this time. We do we have a 90 degree wire, but nothing for the mail terminal yet. Nope. Not yet. Hang tight. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah. Uh, it'd be cool to see the pink wires and caps again. <laughs> pink wires are still here, man. Do we have How many you want, dude? <laughs> we got some, some pink wires here. I don't you, know. I got to look. We some got of pink the pink e brake boots. Oh yeah, let me tell you about the pallet load. A um, couple other cool prop pieces around awesome here too. Some OEM stuff here. Yeah, let's get these over. These are let's talk so, about those, those, and we'll talk about some other stock stuff. So yeah, you can grab this. I go and get that out of the way. So for years, Ampy uh, was importing these uh, Pitman arms in chrome. You know, so when uh, everybody decided to make these in China for the off-road sand buggies, at the time everybody wanted chrome. So, you know, so we had hundreds of these in chrome, and then everybody was like, "Well, we don't want chrome anymore. We want black." The reason why they want black is because all the stock ones are gone. I mean, all these OEM parts are drying up. So we did a big run of these in black. So all three of the pitman arms that we were making before chrome, we also ordered them in black this time. So yep. we have both at this present time. And another thing that was really common and people were running out of are these uh, couplers for your steering coupler that goes on your steering box and your steering shaft. I mean, we made them in chrome for years. We sold thousands, but everybody's like, we want black. All right, so we did black. So we've sold a few hundred of these. Pitman arms haven't caught on as well but i don't think people know we have them so we do all three large hole do the later model ones with the big and small tie rod so all three of these are available these have been selling regularly we've sold hundreds of these and these yeah everybody wanted them in black so those are a cool part even the little uh, dust caps too well this is something yeah that we kind of right, know i know you're excited about these it's I'm like not show too tell, excited man. but show you know people were asking me for dust caps for the bay windows you know and i'm like well really have an OE number for them, but we do have a dust cap that we made for our disc brake kits for bay windows. So we had Henry go downstairs and pull some OE rotors and pull these dust caps out of our kits. And lo and behold, the dust caps that we tooled up for our disc brake kits work on the OEM rotors as well. So we actually put them in the system under an OE number. You know, these are uh, pretty reasonable. I mean, you should be able to buy them or dealers can get them. I mean, you know, they're not going to be any more than what anybody else sells them for. I mean, there's a few other people making them, but they're good. They fit tight. I've sold them to about three or four dealers that I trust, and they've tried them on uh, our rotors. They tried them on OEM rotors, so they're out there. But, yeah, these are your later model bay window dust caps, and not too many people are making them. So, Jason brought up a good one here. He said, how about a dust cap for an early split bus? There's nothing available. Yeah, that's one we might look into because I do have one number we haven't tried yet, so. Maybe, I don't know how early, how early is he talking? Like, yeah, but I mean, let us know. Like 63 and down or like super early? Yeah. We might have something that'll fit like a uh, early 60s. We just haven't gone that far yet. There you go, Jason. Let us know. We'll, we'll keep digging, but that's why we have this show. So you guys can give us uh, some requests. Here's one we saw a ton of. These are the uh, proper mounts if you want to build your front end a German spec and not just throw a shock on it with no bump stop. So if you want to be able to hit a speed bump <laughs> at more than five miles an hour without shaking your teeth out, you'll actually run this with the OEM style shock because this is how Germany designed the front end to be used. So a ball joint front end does not have a bump stop. The bump stop is all built into the shock. So if you buy a KYB shock or some of the other aftermarket shocks, you lose your bump stop altogether. So we've been making these for years and we also make the uh, OE shock to go with it. So this is the OE style yeah. upper shock mount shock bolts into this and this bolts into the beam. But these are uh, pretty common. These will actually sell quite a few. For some reason, we don't sell nearly as many shocks, but we have both. So yeah, and again, it's it's stuff like this just to give people an insight to say, hey, look, you know, oh, I've been trying to source this, or they're pulling it off one of their old cars sitting in the backyard. And I mean, they're just the 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 reasons are essentially limitless why people do certain things, and it's just to give them an opportunity to say, you don't have to fight the old rusty. Fender bolts and nope. scratch, you know, cut your finger off we got trying to touch fenders. You know, you've we got them, uh, and we've got a, a lot of them, and we want to make sure that we share that stuff with you guys. So, um, 
Got some stocking stuffers there you haven't talked yeah, about. Yeah, we'll, we'll, I mean, we'll close out on those things too. But yeah, definitely have the stocking stuffers. So, you know, we, we, we've, uh, we have these store stock deep. So we've got a lot of keychains and a lot of swag and a lot of goodies. So, you know, for the dealers and people, people message us all the time. And it's, it's a real tough situation for us because, you know, we want to stay tr true to our roots and we're a wholesale only company. So we, we haven't been able to offer even the promotional items essentially as a retail yeah. ongoing thing, unless it's been at a show or something like that. But we're trying to get into that heavier because we know how much you guys like to support the brand and just love that blue, you know, the, the, the blue globe. So we want to uh, e expand on that. So our, our, our merch line, our t-shirts, our hats, our hoodies, all that stuff is growing in little stocking stuffers, especially right now for Christmas. Uh, we are an exclusive distributor on these. Um, and we can probably use it on the camera a little bit better, yeah. but these are, we have a few more coming, but spun center line style wheel, BRM, you know, the IDA carburetor, EPC. Yep. EPC. This is actually an MP EPC, not a Weber ID. <laughs> <laughs> but we, you know, we have those and a few more, uh, more coming that should be due in any time. Um, but Some they're the fastest carburetors in real street. Right? That's right. Wink's listening in right now. I think too, a little, little razzle talking now. Um, but it, again, these are just little items that are cool. Um, you know, and, and just to make He's a nice little gift. Over there you might want to talk about. Well, I got two of them. I got both sides of them. I got the black and the silver. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about those a little bit. Those. So uh, this is the full kit. Yeah, that's the smaller one. Before you get into that, I got a question. Fire away. Um, are the lowered shocks oil filled by any chance? We sell a lowered oil filled shock. Yeah. We sell them two ways. We sell gas and oil filled. And do you have racing headers? Do we have racing headers? Do you have racing headers? I have racing headers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the hell you're talking about, but. I'll from Big Bad Racing. Oh, Big Bad John. Big Bad John checking uh, in. Yeah, I don't know about Big Bad John, you know. I'm a, he was going to make me a header, but then I seen him over there making headers for Lizard or somebody else. And I was like, you know what, John? I don't know. Man. I don't yeah. know if I can trust you, John. John's giving out the racing, the, the horsepower know, secrets. I don't, anybody I, I, I don't know if that. I'm more mad that, that John's chiming in on your live feed well, with you know, or, or, or on mine. But that's all right. Do both, we, won't hold it, we won't hold it above against him too much. All um, here. I've never, oh, Wink chimed in again on this one here. I've never seen those bump stops before. That's perfect for your, for your, uh, class your 11. Class, Wink. Well, he's got, I think, Street class 11. He's got yeah. some coilovers on there or something. Yeah, those are kind of iffy, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they work to get the car the way you want it, but they don't they All right. handle right. Yeah, but I was saying, man, I want to, I want to race Wink, man. Why can't we get a, get to go out pre run with us? He's got a big motor in that. Yeah, thing. I know. I'll just ram him though. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> his car's too nice mine's not, i'm not worried about it yeah, yours i know a place a to get times. fenders <laughs> yep. got plenty of them in stock. um some more great questions coming through uh of, misty of course coming in with the fire uh -oh. speaking of catalog please capital please make a new catalog we can send we're misty working we're working uh i can tell you firsthand that's my personal project along with my team uh there's five of us that are working diligently on that thing on a daily it's a big project. It man. is a massive project. We're starting from scratch. Yep. So we've been it all new. We've had to make everything from scratch. Um, the There's old a lot files. of common sense into it. Yeah. <laughs> we've we really I think you guys will be extremely happy with the end product. It'll kind of bring it to a new age. So if you love the old book, it's been set the way for 20 years. We're not doing it like the old book anymore. Yeah, it's gonna be different. It definitely will be different. It's gonna have a new vibe, new feel, and new touch, much like the new packaging much like just the things that we want to do to bring it to the 21st century or at least the 20th, but you know, <laughs> just the so things smart. that we're trying to do to really help and, and, uh, and make it more user-friendly, um, you know, pairing parts that are, you know, that are yeah, right with one another. The right section. I mean, there's some random stuff in there. I mean, you'll have, uh, like the OEM thermostat for the stock fan with the, uh, 3357 21 off-road thermostat. No, that <laughs> thermostat should be with the fan shroud. Yeah. There's just some random stuff. I mean, a lot of it was just done by word search versus common sense. So. Yeah. So we're really, right. we're, we're putting a ton of effort in this thing, but it's, it's the vibe is different. The look is different. The usability is going to be phenomenal. We are interfacing QR cards or QR uh, codes. codes. We're linking things to our YouTube videos. We got a YouTube video library that we're trying to get ready to upload and still continue to create. So it's a, spend a lot of time on the index too, because I know the old index was not. Yes. So the new index will be very, but it'll be the, the, the index itself and, and 
it'll be very user friendly, you know, generic name and go where they need to go. Um, and then how it's separated by brand in some areas is going to be helpful. Yeah, you know, we'll have like a JC section. We're going to have a few little. Yeah, little I mean, I mean, real simple. I mean, MP and Bug Pack will be lumped together. JC will be its own section, and then uh, we'll have a separate book for the JP group following behind it. And then following behind that'll be a new book for the the, the uh, driveline stuff. So, ton of work in yeah, front of us. Go. Hundreds of hours. Misty, please be patient. We're exactly. working on it. We're even trying to expand the Hopefully photo. Hopefully Q one, Misty Q one yeah. next year. That's so our plan. I'd say in the next ninety to one hundred twenty days, we should at least be really close. Yeah, we might not have thousands of them ready to ship, but we'll have a couple samples for sure. We'll be real close. Yeah, that's that's the plan. And then uh, just the photo project alone too. I mean. Yeah. Guys, when we we started in here, uh, you know, when I kept, took over as marketing director, I mean, we we were really lacking in the photo department, and you guys can see that at one point we were something like 3,500, 3,600 photos that we just never even had. We've had product in here that we were selling, and we never exactly. had photos of it. So, yeah, but everything needs a picture. I mean, these soil bearings, I mean, they need their own picture. They this bearing does not look like a Chinese bearing. If I try to use the Chinese soil bearing picture this somebody's not going to order they might say well, that's not a snack i don't want it i mean some people just don't look at the fine print so I mean, we you almost need a picture for every item in the book and that's what we're working towards and we're still 1500 pictures away but yeah. we're working towards yeah, it we have we so much new day. stuff i mean if we printed a catalog three months ago it wouldn't have angle cams in it I mean, so it's just like there's, and then we have to draw the line somewhere we're getting in you know probably a few dozen new numbers every month or more you know but then we try to figure out where are we going to draw that line and say, okay, that's it. You know, is it going to be December 31st? Whatever is here and in the building that we can take pictures of is what's going in and that's it, you know? Yeah. And that, that's hard part because we're just expanding so much. Uh, Jason chime back said, yes, 63 and down bus. Okay. Yeah. We'll work on it. Can we can take a look at that. A couple of things back there. I can look at. Uh, let me try to catch up on these comments, guys. Let's see where we're at. I mean, life in a bug. Okay. Do you exist it? All right. Good, good, good um uh, yeah, another no longer available is a split bus axle for reduction trans Yeesh, that's i don't know uh, that's I probably mean, that's uh i just don't know if the demand's there because there's so many guys that are slamming their buses i think there's still enough used ones out there i mean dude i get guys that give away split cores yeah so i mean it's not that you know it's not a viable option to make them but i just don't know what the demand is there's a ton of cores out there that i've seen he's talking about also uh spindles early and late spindles dry market for those he's claiming that's true you know we've seen some spindles drying up in other markets too we're working on spindles i mean there's a lot of uh i don't want to give away too much but we're working on a lot of suspension parts right now you know behind the scenes you know stuff that's not not out there yeah and again it just it just takes time i okay. mean it takes time to source these things oh, this crank took um about nine months you know and it wasn't anything too special you know. yeah, that's something that's already essentially readily yeah. available. It, it took two years on a valve cover. <laughs> yeah. Probably should have been about a year, but we had some hiccups on the way. I mean, even the Willwood, the Willwood, same time. I started working with them November, December of, uh, I was actually talking to Will Wood at the SEMA show in 2018 about that Galloper. Yeah. Well, took, we'll talk about those. Yeah. I mean, this, we've talked about them a lot. These things have really, I think we broke the internet one day when yeah. we launched them on the going into yeah, the weekend. We, I mean, I was, at lunch with Rick Sadler and he was amazed, you know, he's been in the industry 40 years and he's couldn't believe how many we sold the first month. I mean, it was a ton. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. I mean, these, we can chime in on those and you guys asked for colors. This is another great example of, yeah, let me get one of these. So now the way we're, it, we um, the way we're selling them now is they're actually coming preloaded. So if you buy a kit, you don't even have to put the pads in yourself. We're getting them preloaded from Willwood now. So it's even easier install. <laughs> you don't even have to put the pads in. So you don't have to pull the clips out. So this is a red one. Like I said, everything was done right. Metric fitting, no more adapters. You buy a disc brake kit from almost anybody else that does VW disc brake kits. They have a brass adapter. In there. They probably buy from us. It's eight <laughs> inch to 10 millimeter. But, you know, why do that when you can just drill and tap the copper itself? So, you know, universal, they're left and right. So they got bleeders on both sides. But like I said, these things are they're jamming like crazy. And I got a couple guys reaching out from the, uh, like, Formula V world. I got a guy asking for a couple that I might send him check out but uh i think they're only going to keep getting stronger i mean we've just been selling them every day we're selling a dozen of these it's crazy I mean, they're just moving like crazy and uh we're gonna try to put them in more kits and uh you know we're working on some new stuff you know people have been asking for the the rear kit and you know they want bigger front kits and there's just a i don't know i mean i have some wild ideas for the front stuff that kind of goes with those bigger wheels and some yeah. other stuff it's just how far can you push it i mean i know the vw market's changing you know 
people are willing to spend more money, but I don't know. You know, you know, it's interesting too that with the expansion of these the, the calipers, I mean, we we and if some of you guys don't even know, we've already added the drilled and slotted rotor kits to this, and some of them um, where it's just a yeah, it's we just got a the Chevy upgrade. pattern kits, the you know, well, the Chevy and the Porsche are the same rotor. We have a double drill rotor. Um, we do some Super Beetle kits. I mean, there's a few kits. There's probably a few more kits. If there's a kit that you guys want to see that we're not doing, let me know. Like I said, I don't know if we're doing a Porsche pattern Super Beetle kit yet. So there's a few more kits we can we can add in there. Sure. Got a good one, off-road one. Finally, an off-road question. Yeah. Uh, Negrete Senior checking in on the micro stub trailing arms. Are we going to do anything like we did with the race trim stuff? We're going to do offer an arm for it. Um, well, we have a little hiccup with our race trim micro stub kits right now we're having issues getting the uh bearing right now so yeah. once we get that solved then uh, we might look at getting the arm made but i wouldn't mind doing like a three by three for the micro stub that'd be sick yeah and then do it like as we talked about different beam scenarios and stuff like that to complement yeah. the whole deal so sure. i mean it's all trust me guys we know that we're on the radar with the off-road stuff. We're kind of getting back to a lot of our roots and really touching and reconnecting with those, those off-road racers. And we hear you. I mean, yeah. we, we want to, there's been a, a demand for it. I mean, we're just, we're more willing now to do some of the low volume stuff, you know, previous ownership. If we couldn't sell a hundred a year or more, he just didn't want to do it. But now we're wanting to do a little more low volume things. So just got to keep expanding, you know? Like, so we want to be a one-stop shop. You know, you should be able to come to Ampy and, do whatever you want to do. If you want to build a Baja bug, you want to build a street car, drag car, which I mean, we've, we've done a ton of stuff. I mean, right now, I mean, think about two years ago, you couldn't buy all the parts to build a drag motor. Now you can. I mean, you got ported heads on the shelf. You got flange cranks. You got good clutch disc. You got flywheel. good pressure plates. You got the flange flywheels. Even the pilot bearing. Yeah. The pilot bearing for the flange, the flange yeah. crank. We got the bolts now. I mean, it's just all it takes time. I mean, it's just getting it all here at one time. I mean, we got the flange cranks before we got the flywheels. We got the flywheels and we didn't have the bolts because the ARP had to make the bolt special. I mean, it just takes time to get it all, get it all done. But, you know, we're getting there. Yeah, we got the Wiseco piston, the Revmaster cylinder. Now we're thinking about bringing back the old Chrome Molly bug pack head studs. So, I mean, there's yeah. a lot of good stuff coming. I mean, you should be able to build a motor. That will last and make 230, 240 horse out of the MP catalog. I mean, it's coming. Yep. You know, so by the end of next year, you should be able to build a pretty stout engine without having to go anywhere else. That will last, you know. So will you ever do a new JC mount style on the Moroso covers? No, I, I think well, those will stay. Jack's, Jack's got that cover. That was kind of his idea to do the side mount deal. So Yeah, something just, again, totally different. Yeah, Jack wanted to be different, you know. I mean, there's other billet valve covers out there, so he wanted to change the game a little bit and, he did. I mean, we've been selling quite a few of those too. Yep. That's interesting. Retro swag. Uh, we already got some of the uh, the auto house stuff still available. So we need to check into that. And we still have some uh, bug pack stuff. So those are a couple of good ones. Um, off road air cleaners, like two stage uni filters, stuff like that. Yeah. We, we had a relationship with uni and we still do. They actually buy some parts from us. So we might look into carrying a few of their covers. Revisiting I know people that. like the uh, foam covers for a lot of rough dusty. Yeah. The outerwares are good for the sand, but they don't hold up in the dust. They don't. They don't. They don't stop nearly as much as the the foam does. So yeah. that might be one to put on your notes. Call Uni up. Maybe we'll start getting some more wraps for the uh, four and a half by sevens and the five and a half by nines. There you go. And they're right up the street. Yeah, guys, that's what that's what I love about this show, man. It's you get you're getting direct feedback to where you're going to see the, you know essentially new part numbers coming out on stuff and new social media things. And you get me, Hey, I'm the one that gave Impy that idea to do that or brought it back up or bringing it back. Might get one free one. Never know. <laughs> uh, Misty saying, where's the stock heads? <laughs> I got a whole bunch. They're made in Brazil. Yep. 98, 13, 42 B. How many do you want? Yep. Come and get them. Quality valve job, Osfat valves, U.S. made spring. Let, let's talk a little I mean, bit about that. I yeah, mean, I mean, we, we've, we've, we've given snippets to it before, but let's really yeah, give mean, people some more information yeah, about I mean, the head program. Yeah, our dual port head, we've done a lot of research and we bought heads from competitors and we bought heads from, I don't want to mention names, but let's just say three of the most, you know, relevant people that sell cylinder heads in the VW industry, we've bought heads from them just to take them apart and compare what else is out there. You know, so if you buy a stock cylinder head from any of, you know, the competitors, the MP and you take it apart, you'll be pretty surprised at how, uh, how they're putting their heads together. I mean, you could take a stock head from brand A, B or C and uh, throw some solvent in the intake valve and you'll watch it pour right out. 
into the chamber. I mean, none of these heads even have a real valve job. None of them are lap. None of them even seal. I mean, you're talking about, you know, like flip a coin if the motor's even going to run right. Where every stock dual port cylinder head we have here gets a three angle valve job on our rottler. You know, it gets hand assembled. You know, we randomly spot checking for leaks, but I mean, I mean, these heads are actually some of the best heads out there. Out of the box. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about auto linear casting, uh, rottler, three angle valve job, Italian OSVAT valves, US made spring. Uh, I think it's a Brazilian made retainer. You know, we get the keepers from a US company. I can't guarantee they're made in the US, but I mean, they're still a quality keeper. I mean, there's no corners cut, you know, I mean, yeah. And, uh, you know, we've sold thousands. I mean, we had a really good head that was made in China that we're retooling right now. But uh, the Brazilian heads you can get from MP right now are the best, probably dual part head you can buy on the market right now. You know, like I said, we've sold quite a few. But like I said, there's a lot of time in them for sure. We're not just slapping them together. Yeah. You know what's interesting, man? I got there's the one, two, three, four, five, six comments coming through all asking for three by three arms. No. Well, what do you guys want? You want a conventional yeah. or do you want micro stub? Yeah. Uh, one says micro stub. Pearl Molly, mild steel. Yeah. Tell us. We want to know. I I'll mean, have them here in a couple of weeks. Shit. We got the bin there. We got the fixture. We could do it up well, and make our prototype. There's the guys here that, you know, we might do kit form where we actually buy some parts, weld them here. But yeah, we got the, we got the possibilities. I mean, you guys want box? Do you want tube? I mean, tube is kind of cool for the guys back east, but most of the desert guys like yeah. the box. Yeah, I mean, it'll definitely, especially for like the regular 516 cars, like the Negretti car, it's got to be a standard one-by-one one boxed in arm for the strength. I mean, there's requirements. Do you like yeah. with a regular class 11 it has to be a stock arm while you can use a box kit. Yeah. But I think the three by three arm would be killer for some of just the regular pre-runner Baja guys. Yeah, no, we had them. I mean, I was here when I got here about 10 years ago, we still had a few pairs of them and i was here when we ran out and i got asked for them for years afterwards another one too great this is a great one spencer uh baja bug kits you know the fiberglass kits i'm like I, it, you want to bring it back it's i tough. got a source <laughs> i got a guy if we can get enough requests all right we're gonna do a poll on social media if we can get at least i don't know 10 maybe a hundred uh retweets or something we'll do something like that we can get some uh, not retweets but repost yeah shares some shares i'd be willing to take a flyer on it maybe buy a dozen bring them up see what happens yeah but I, I mean i have the connection i mean i've already talked about it so the baja kits you guys want wide eye it's, or bug eye uh, yeah that's a tough one man. <laughs> it's, it's got to be wide all the way yeah. the bug eye stuff is just yeah, we might do a little limited run i might buy 10 put them on the shelf see what happens probably be more of a local dealer pain in the butt to ship but. i know lucas hand was probably late to the party here but lucas you're talking about uh Air boxes, good in stock, man. Ready to go. Four inch, even three inch. Snore legal, score legal, proper size, width, velocity stacks, extended. USA made. You. Not to get too technical, but you know, on the newer HPMXs, we have the idle jets moved. Mm -hmm. Is this thing compatible? Would you guys end up cleared? It cleared. Yeah. Okay. I was probably half figure. It's out. off a little bit. That's why you can see it moved back. We cleared it, but you can also. It's got a little bit of room to work. Gotcha. So this could be cut out an inch or, you know, half yeah, inch on either side. To. So a little grind if need be. Yeah. Uh, man, there's, I can't even keep up with the comments coming what through the stream right now. Man. I dig it. Uh, yeah, bear with me. We're, we're already kind of cranking through it. Uh, uh, Lucas, no, man, we don't need to copy anybody's box. We'll kind of create in our own with that in-house Dyna. We've been able to find some of that horsepower from those 50 horsepower turds as Jesse likes to That's call right. them. <laughs> make me build one we're trying to get them all out we're trying to get trying to get Je who would like to see jesse out bashing around in a uh, in an 11 i don't know if his old back uh, I, don't know, man. I sound like tyson it's spinal <laughs> my i broke is my back is broken dad uh seven piece and three piece uh i have a couple such gtv heads big cc motors they work very well thank you ray tibbins says gtv2 heads GTV2s on gtv2s are alive and well man the newest castings came back pretty clean few upgrades that we didn't really make public but they're uh they're nice man yeah you know the thing is every is, time we run them we make them better each time yeah and and that's we don't necessarily need to you know it's yeah. it's uh to talk about what we're doing in the slight tweaks just, just enjoy There's the added benefit of, uh top engine builders that run our heads I mean, a lot of guys will, will remain anonymous but you know if you flip through the hobby w's man a lot of guys advertise and run their heads yeah sure uh jeff hope do you have an airbox for a class 11 solex i don't at the moment 
but it will be available shortly. It'll look very similar, just a little smaller. High comp, <laughs> High comp motor. Yeah. We're going low comp on a lot of stuff, so we'll see how it works. Marty Staggs checking in, man. Thanks for checking in, Marty. Marty Staggs. Thanks for the Raptor blow off of Marty. Uh, Lucas hand need to bring my motor down to compare numbers, bring it down. Losers buys dinner. So prepare and bring your checkbook. That's a stone cold call out. Sucker. Speaking about that. I know with all the COVID stuff, we haven't been doing any real drag racing. I had a customer slash racer on the phone today and he's wondering if we might be able to do a little, uh, dino day down here on the JC Dino. I mean, I know with the COVID it's restrictions, it's tough, but 100% discussed Been on the radar. It's on the radar. We're kind of just waiting just when we think we're going to crest and get into another area. It gets slammed down. Yeah. We want to do a dyno shootout. We want to do um, a motor build off. We want. We have a couple yeah. different things. But we kind of just want to do a shootout dyno day where just biggest horsepower turbo car wins, biggest yeah. horsepower Asprey wins, something along those lines. We've got the TV outside the dyno room. We've got the area yeah, somewhat cleared out. Basic, It'll like be bitching. even a pump gas motor deal, kind of like the old Chico build off they did before. You know, I mean, we'll supply the gas. Maybe we'll make it real easy. You know, displacement rule. We could pump the motor wins you yeah. know, or just even pull ahead something in the world that's out of the car what's so hard about it yeah I, i'm i'll I'm, keep it real open and uh you know put some simple rules i mean i think i'd probably want you to have to not be able to tune on it too much but you know come in with your tune up if it yeah, you, got, itself, no, you don't sit here and tune it up change, yeah. you're gonna run it it comes and in it'll ready be a roll. little bit of uh i'd say a little bit of endurance deal. i'm not gonna do one pull I mean, you're not gonna come in here with 91 octane and 34 degrees of timing you're gonna put some load on it and try to route it loose a little be some fun, man. Well, that's nobody can race right now, so we gotta do something. It's what it's it's as soon as we and can. I got get, the wink killer right there on the oh. floor. I can't even use. You know, <laughs> he, he just when he gives you a chance to to <laughs> give you a little prop. Okay, so by the way, if you guys haven't noticed that there's quite the rivalry between Wink and Jesse, both uh, real street. Gives the whole real street crew. You know, Jesse. They all yeah. Know. I mean, you know, we will we, 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 we can't we'll, race though. I mean, <laughs> just talk right now. so this is good. This is where the shit talking side comes into play. And I kind of like this part of it. So it's good. Um, and he, he gave you a compliment. So your boy uh, Wink chimed uh, in. Says, I, I, I wondered why I haven't seen Jesse driving. I bet he could wheel the shit out of an 11 car. I can drive an 11. He, I'll tell you right now. So I rode with Jesse pre running at one of the races that read the um, Vegas, Casey Vegas. night race. Yeah, we pre ran that race in his can am. I'm a terrible passenger. Yeah, I'm not enough to get you scared. Yeah, I just <laughs> and 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 the kid can drive. You know, I've been we, driving off road. Oh man, if we had time to, you know, what we should have set eight. up. I've got my uh, reaction time tree here. Oh, we could have settled that shit them. once and hey, for all. I didn't say you can't drag. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, but no, uh, man, it's just been it's it's fun, right? It's all yeah. in fun. I mean, you know, there may be shit talking during the time things and when racing goes down. I, I wouldn't mind trying the eleven. If you guys end up getting that short course done, I might be willing to jump in there. A lap or two yeah yeah i mean i just know i mean honestly i mean a lot of you guys don't know but i did break my back you know early 2014 so i can't take a, a big beating in the car but i could sure uh suck up about 15 20 minutes for sure you know just to, <laughs> just to lay down a number that's not a problem yeah it's all in fun man it's all about getting out and doing something um and just just takes another I mean, experience wink right? knows wink was the one talking all the smack about me being off-road and man i mean i spend more time in the dirt than i do on the drag strip that's for sure I mean, I honestly wink i'm probably a better off-road driver than drag racer <laughs> you heard it here first finally I, somebody I, agrees I, i'm <laughs> just telling you you know i mean i freaking probably have a hundred times more yeah. time in the dirt than in the street i mean how it goes. well you're living out in glamis yeah, down here so. out there two weekends in a row. i was in johnson valley last weekend and glamis the weekend before Oh, that's fun, man. Like I said, that's just more of a family deal. My kids get to jump in and spend hours out there. I mean, my kids are into the drag race thing, but you know, they like watching daddy go down the track, but still, you know, you wake them up at six in the morning, they got to sit there in the pits all day. And just I think that's go. for me has been the most fun about the off road thing. Yeah, it's you take your daughter with you. you get to hang out, bring my daughter. We, we get to spend time together. You know, I strapped her in the 11 car. She yeah. went and pre ran around out in Ocotillo testing the time in the car has been an absolute blast because it's so much longer, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. and you don't, you're not, I'm not replacing the trans every outing. And it's like, man, it's a total affordable race. That's why it's like, yeah, I mean, and my kids do get a kick out of me racing. I mean, they love watching me go on the track, do the wheelies, all that. But it's the part that you guys don't see is all the time at home to get yeah. that car ready and be competitive. I mean, it's 30, 40 hours. So that's when the kids are inside and I'm outside in the garage working on the car, you know? So it's just, it's a sacrifice, you know? And sometimes I feel like I'm being a little selfish with the drag race deal because it's so much time to get the car ready, build a motor. I mean, to build a motor like the ones in the blue car, it's 40 hours, you know, at least, you know, just to 
do it right. You know, you're checking decks, you're measuring the cranks, you're torquing the case, bore gauge, and it's it's a mess, you know. It's Violent just taking range. all I can not to start rattling the cage over here. I'm like, so is that which which blue which car is that? Which, <laughs> which, what's it? Um, how fast is that compared to the Herbie? Oh, um, gotta get them going. One thousand. <laughs> I don't know, something like that. Uh, Ray, uh, Ryan Tibbins, the quality of Bimpy products have gone up greatly, man. We we really thank you. I mean, it's we're trying, man. I mean, a lot of people don't know. I mean, how many people do we hire? I mean, probably once Dubin Clark took over, just on the quality side of things, we have a full time engineer, two or three guys over there doing CAD. I mean, every part we make has a CAD drawing now and a scan. I mean, we're we have three guys working. Well, Trevor's with, engineer now too. He's graduated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's not interning. Yeah, we have two full time engineers. And uh, two interns back there. I mean, we're just doing everything by the book. I mean, like we're working on my, I'll let the secret out. We're working on our, our drop spindles. I mean, we're redesigning all of our, you know, drop spindles for our disc brakes. You know, yep. we're making sure the caster's right, that they're equal left to right, that the ball joint's in the right spot. I mean, everything is getting redone. I mean, so we're just, uh, we're going back to the basics and making these parts as good or better than anybody else's parts in the industry. Yeah, yep. that's just and part getting back to the roots. Of uh, kind of the engineering aspect of the original name, and then you know expanding on the product line. Like I said plugging the holes. I mean, how how I mean, we can talk about it. How cool would it be to see a a a, a, a front end spindle to spindle, yeah. you know, caliper to caliper with drilled and slotted rotors? I mean, how bitching is that? Yeah, I mean, we got a lot of a uh, lot of eggs in the basket right now, but we're, we're moving. Oh, we got we got more we got more wink chiming. Oh in. yeah, I love I'm it. This, fired up. <laughs> yeah, big shout out to Darren and Johnson Valley and those dudes up there, King of the Hammer stuff, and and just the whole group up there really kind of pushing us to 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 go up there, go pre run. What it's, is it's, the plan for King of the Hammers now? King of the Hammers there. is set, dude. But what are we doing? Am I camping out there? Well, yeah, we're camping. We're camping right. out there for like we're because, setting up a booth. Yeah, what's so the schedule? I don't have the exact date, but we're, I know they're supposed to do the big race on the Saturday now. Yeah, so we're we gonna be out there Monday through Saturday the whole week because we've got we got a big booth planned to to be out there. To showcase the yeah, MP the products, thing and stuff. Is I wouldn't mind being up to the whole week. I just figure out if we can get some good internet up there. It's it's I got it wired. Yeah, so we can work. Yep. Um, man, so much cool stuff. Let's see. Let me get through this. Put him in the podium. Put him in the car and get it on the podium. Son, the car's already been on the podium. Stop it. <laughs> um, Belinda chiming that. in. Then you'll have two. You know, two thrash. Uh, two weeks. Yep. Uh, raise spindles. That's been another great topic i got a question for you guys who's paying attention would you guys like to see a welded ray spindle that uh you know uses a stock bug ball joints would you guys be into like a thing spindle where you got to run a thing arm i don't know i mean that's the thing is maybe we could do a hybrid you know thing style that takes a stock ball joint yeah it's know. tough i mean you know the thing is its own ball joint they both come in the same way so it's a little more durable off-road but i don't know let us but, know. I mean, that's stuff that we we you know, love to hear. Yeah, Ray Spindle. Uh, we've talked about it. I, mean, I don't think it's going to be anywhere near the volume that the drop spindles are, but I think we could sell a few hundred a year and make it work. Too. How about raised beams, guys? Would you guys like to see us do a stock ball joint or link pin style beam and just do a small cut and turn? I mean, put let us know. In yeah, it. put some adjusters in it for you, ready to go. That way, uh, Wink can get rid of them coilovers. <laughs> Bring that thing by, Wink. We want to go take it for a hot lap around the let's compound. Cut and turn that beam real quick. Just drop it off. We'll give it back. And uh, let's see here. What else we got? Uh, and the class eleven race at King Lambers. Yes, Lucas. The class eleven race is set. I thought that was really funny. I don't know if you Am guys I driving that. one lap. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know if you can handle it, man. I handle one lap. I was out there all weekend, man. But I think it was pretty cool that like the Ultra Four guys that said, "Oh, how many excited for King of the Hammers coming up?" You know. What's your favorite class going to be, and why is it class eleven? <laughs> I just think that was so freaking awesome. How many awesome. miles is that course going to be? It's going to be short course. It'll be short course in the in infield? infield. No, are you? Is it well, like because you can't. I was there anywhere. last year, and they did qualifying for the UTVs. We had some customers I was out there supporting Weller Racing and some of the other guys. But basically, it was the infield. They went up the hill and came back down, but nothing too crazy. That's pretty much what I think is going to happen. I mean, they're probably were in four wheel drive. There's a little rocky section, but uh, they have to get rid of some well, of that stuff. I was out there. You know, all weekend, and we had a VW based. Well, it was a VW based buggy, but it had a Subaru. But it was a two wheel drive deal with a bus train. He was going over a lot of technical stuff. I mean, if you get a good run at it, you guys can get through some stuff. I got forty horse, man. Remember? So what are we gonna do? <laughs> do that? I got four inches of travel. That sounds like yeah. rattling my feelings out when I get done. Uh, man, so got a ton of great stuff, uh, Darren. I'm just gonna stay at your house when we're up there. So leave us yeah, ready. It's pretty cold. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, the thing front end would be sweet. Uh, we do have thing welded ball joints stubs. There. Yep. We do thing uh, drums. A lot of people don't know, but we have thing ball joints and thing rear drums. MP has available. So well, that's another another item for you guys to mark off the list of requests right now. Uh, studded drums. That's a that's a kind of a. Yeah, why yeah, not? I guess I mean, we, could we have the machine shop, and we you guys don't know, but a lot of our disc brake kits, we press in the races on them, and we do a lot of stuff. I mean, we have a guy down there all day long that does uh, presses in bearing races. He uh, builds axles. We have the whole setup down there, so we might be able to do some 14 millimeter pressing, like an off road drum or something. Yeah, that'd be cool. Good, good point. I mean, it's again, it's another simple one we could do, yeah. and it's easy to, to package that up. So, um, how did Jesse do in the poker run in Johnson Valley? Do it. Didn't do it. No poker run, man. Greg was out there. That, yeah, poker that place run was, was long. That man. pace was packed. It was like man. a thirty mile poker run. Dude, I'd like. I, I mean, this thing has been nonstop. Most comments are running like crazy. We're already over an hour long, and this is what we wanted to make it about. It's about the engagement, hanging out on a Tuesday afternoon, talking shit, talking race cars, talking car parts and horsepower, and and stuff that we enjoy. Good ideas, some feedback, you know. Yeah. See what guys want to see next. And, but the, uh, but we get. need the new arms for thing, not just the spindle. Well, that's kind of the thing is once you do the spindle, you got to do the arm. Yeah. You know, but I don't know if the market's there to, you know, to do an arm like that. You'd have to make a few thousand. So, Lucas, uh, saving prep time is 100% the whole plan. I mean, I want it to be ready to go and in and out. I want yeah. a spare trans and a spare beam because that's all the things that's you got to do. Get the axles in and out. Uh, last couple of things we've got on here. Uh, you want to talk about the linkage pieces that are popular? Yeah, I mean, these are starting to catch on. I mean, uh, we've been running them on our special, so hopefully the uh, dealers have been passing the savings on to you guys. But uh, this is a common upgrade kit for, like, your, any of you guys that have the uh, dual HPMX carbs that have the white nylon bushing in the base plates, this actually eliminates that. You press in this needle bearing, put a little Loctite on it to keep it there, and now you have a true bearing pivot so you can eliminate, you know, the... Uh, the bushings wearing out in the deflection, but this is a pretty cool upgrade. Like I said, we've been running on special for a couple of months, so hopefully the dealers are passing the savings on to you guys and uh, making it more affordable because they're a little, a little pricey on the regular WD price. But you know, I know we don't like talking price, but hopefully, no. uh, you guys out there can get a good deal on them. We've, yeah, we've been marking them down quite a bit. Lucas MP Imp bodies. Well, we have we talked about it. Well, I've made contact with what appears to be a set of the original molds and it's something that I would love to explore. Um, I would love to work it out to where we would either license and allow them to make them locally. Um, and then we would be the master distributor for them. Something along those lines is kind of what I would like to do. Um, it just, it's just hard to kind of work through this all. So it's something that I know where they're at. I would love to do it. They even have the side pods, um, the whole deal. So trust me, I would love to bring it back and I'd love to own one myself. Uh, oh, so we'll talk about these. So this is, uh, we call this one of the compound built products kind of coming to market. Um, this is the, like the, the conical washer and uh, a nice Allen head finish screw for all your hardware and tin. We have them uh, with the black washer um, How many pieces is that one? This one is gigantic. I don't even. I, I, or what? Yeah, this is like a ton, a ton piece. It doesn't even say the quantity on it. Um, but this one is like got to be like a hundred piece kit because, bam, uh, you can see it right there. Nice washers. Um, it has we have black available as well. They're all nice anodized. Oh, you can see the washers are are anodized there. And, and that's uh, similar to the hardware that was on the engine at SEMA. Exactly couple years ago so yeah last year see my engine that um that those are like the washers you guys saw like around the you know all this all the tin i mean essentially and, and we made a nice washer for it um had them all anodized had the right um screw put in out head screw that one's kind of mixed i'm not sure why it's yeah it's black. that was weird yeah this one is the all stainless so stainless steel screws aluminum washer so that's like your silver kit yep and then we just did black so we did silver and black this one I'm I'm curious about. So, uh, but again, that's stuff that we're going to continue. Talk to our product manager on that one. Get them. Uh, it's just readily available, though. They're they haven't even made their way into a flyer yet. They haven't even made their way yeah, onto the website even, uh, yet. They haven't. I mean, just got the 
black washers back from anodizing. So we're waiting to get them on. Misty, they're anodized. The washers are anodized and the bolts are silver. But I think we have Rick. Some, we have black because they're right here, too. I think there's going to be. I'm going to cut this one open. Yeah. Kind of threw me off. So I, yeah, I thought originally it was going to be silver washer with stainless bolt or black anodized washer with stainless bolt. But I think Rick had some of the bolts black oxide black as oxide. well. Yep. So there might be. So this kid is a blend. I wonder if it's going to be a black on black. It shouldn't be blended. It should all be well, I think it just because we try to book them. But they're bitching. Uh, they look cool. Uh, Misty, no purple, green, orange, red, or blue available. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I just we again, it just uh, oh, we we talked we talked about that uh, before on jack the show, stand. but the jack stand. I think it's in the new Hot VWs ad. Mm -hmm. It is. It so is. That's kind of what it is. It's the uh, jack stand. This is kit form here. Yeah. So we kind of show you how they come into the kit um, and the pieces that it comes with, and we'll let the camera kind of do it. But it's yeah, a, it's just something your... different. Like if you guys are are wanting to give yourself a different vibe and you want to, you know, kind of give yourself that floating, hovering uh, alternator look. I mean, they've been out for a while. They've been holding up. A lot of people were worried that they were going to break or come loose or rattle yeah. loose. But I mean, we've sold hundreds and nobody's really yeah, breaking nothing. them. You know, and you have a little bit of issues. I mean, I'll be honest. I mean, certain alternators, I mean, you got to think there's about five to 10 different Chinese companies making alternators. So every once in a while, the guy will say, oh, the alternator's a little bit loose or a little bit tight, but I mean, it's impossible to make that thing. Yeah. Every put, put a sliver of a Coke can underneath it and away you go. That's about the only issue when you make something that precision is just, you know, you go from old style clamp that'll clamp anything in there to, you know, that thing yeah. had to be pretty precision. But, but yeah, I mean, we fit them with ours. I mean, so if you buy the alternator from MP, it fits. But if you buy the alternator from somebody else, or you got an old Motorola, or you got something else, I mean, that's been the only downside. Yeah. The only other thing people have talked about on now is just the oil fill, but a simple yeah. funnel. That's how it is, man. You want to be different. Yep. You just yeah. got to do a little extra work to get your funnel in there. Harbor Freight sells a funnel for like 98 cents and get you set up and just keep it in your car and you, you have your little crook neck one and it's good to go. That's it, man. Well, it looks cool. I mean, like I said, one's on the car. It's good. What, it's definitely different. What message would you like to leave the audience or kind of some of the stuff you want to tell them just for future as you kind of, as we close up the show? Yeah, man, just sit back and watch. You know, we're, uh, we're doing some pretty big things here and you'll, you'll see it happening. You know, it's all unfolding. Yeah, it just takes time. Yeah, you know, I think you know, there's there. I mean, and we've been through the bashing, not, bashing stage. Yeah, and, I mean, everybody had to kind of you know get on board with what's going on. It took a few months for people to gain our trust and see us, you know, doing some stuff the right way. You know, not that everything was done wrong before, but you know, just opening our eyes and you know doing stuff that we wouldn't do in the past. I mean, like I said, partnering with Angle again, going with the German stuff, making parts here. I mean, MP used to do manufacturing, even under the old ownership, we had CNCs up front and we made axles and parts and. You know, the old owner got away from that, but we're back doing it again. I mean, with the, you know, the JC acquisition, I mean, those machines are running all day, every day. I mean, there's a guy down there making push rod tubes from seven o'clock to five o'clock, five days a week. You know, Anthony's got the CNC going every day, whether it's boring heads or porting heads or cutting them for pockets or cutting them for bigger cylinders. I mean, that hoss is running all day. I mean, the valve grinder's going all day. I mean, we're, we're building what a couple hundred heads a week or more just stock heads. Yeah. I mean, we're valve jobbing a hundred heads a day down there. I mean, we're just we're going for it. You know, so like I said, we're not afraid to do things here. We're not afraid to use uh, you know, US suppliers. It's not all about the dollars anymore. I mean, Willwood Calipers, the angle cams, I mean, they're some of our slimmest margins we have, but you know, we're here to here to give you guys the best parts you can get. You know, it's not all about making a dollar, it's about getting the, the good stuff in your hands. So well, option, right? To make to make it yours, to make it unique. So there's nothing we won't do. You guys ask for colored calipers, you got them. You got them you know? quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got a little bit of juice over there, you know. You buy pallets of calipers, they take care of you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're receptive to anything you guys want to do. I mean, we let the teaser out on the Amoroso over a year ago, and everybody wanted it, so we finished it. You know, I mean, that's just kind of how we're doing it. And I think. Taking feedback and uh, running with it. I think some of the best thing is just being willing to make the investment. Yeah. You know, this stuff takes a lot. Oh, yeah. Of I mean, all of this do. was an investment. I mean, even something like uh, the billet carb top for the IDF. I mean, that was thousands of dollars to get that rolling. You know, I mean, the angle deal. I mean, to get angle to you know, take us seriously again, we had to place a huge order. We had to buy hundreds of cams, you know, to, well, to get that deal. It's more than hundreds, really, yeah. if you think about yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, we got POs out for the whole year. I mean, so we, we got to commit. I mean, these right here, to get these in black, I had to order 500. Yeah, of each 500 of each, each. Yeah, i got 1500 <laughs> of these things here just to get them to paint them black instead of chrome in them i mean this stuff isn't you know these are big commitments you know to make this stuff happen and that's the reason why ampy is one of the only suppliers out there that has such a broad you know 
selection of parts because we have 10 million plus in inventory at any time. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, this is a huge I mean, it cringes thing. to think about a lot of times, but that's what it it's takes. Investment. The, the supply chains, you know, for instance, we're in the middle of a pandemic and you've been here over 10 years. Yes, sir. And I mean, we've, we, we've struggled with fulfillments at times. I mean, and yeah. it's like, we're, we're, this is where people understand, like we'll buy a year's worth yeah. of supply. And, and a lot of people just don't know the challenges we're having. I was downstairs talking to Anthony Vaughn and you know, he's kind of asking me, Hey, what's going on? I come some of these parts. And I said, Anthony, I've had parts at the port for three weeks. It's two to three weeks just to get a truck to pick up a container and bring it to empty. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we're just facing challenges all over the place. I mean, it's not. And, and every day is a different market. challenge. Oh, a different and it's thing. like, I think people are, have been utilizing sometimes the COVID thing as leverage to, to capitalize yeah. on it. Like we talked about the ports of the truck. Oh, yeah. do you want yours to be the front of the line or the back of the line? Yeah. It's an extra 2,500 bucks. Cost, yeah. I mean, everything's going up. It's yeah. just, just to get parts out. We have a huge order going overseas and we have a 53 foot container here, but it took two weeks just to get the container here. Two weeks. They used to be two days. Yeah. You know, so everything's slowing down, you know? So we're trying, like I said, it's not, because we're not, I mean, we have, I mean, at our cost, we have over a million dollars worth of parts on their way here. On the water. Yeah. At our cost. I mean, so that's, that's crazy. I mean, it's, it's insane, but we're, we're trying, like I said, everything that we're out of is on order. <laughs> There's nothing yeah. we're not trying to get. I mean, it's just a matter of getting it here. And we, and we've constantly expanding. I mean, and there's other good. stuff going on. I mean, we're upgrading our suppliers and you know, we got a guy that was making this part for us might not have been making it the way we want it. So we're going to a different supplier and making it better, you know, so it takes a little bit of time to get it drawn up and tooled first articles here and approved and whatnot so and i think that's a lot of the stuff that we again we try to convey this and re reiterate it multiple times so like even though xyz factory may have had that and now we're going to move it to abc mm -hmm. we may not even take the tooling that we paid for five years ago or three years ago or a year ago for it because we want to use a better tooling okay. a better process to ensure a better part with a better factory Sure. And all this stuff is just hopefully to, you know, keep this hobby alive and for the future there's and really setting it up parts, man, that MP makes There's a lot of stuff. We do private label for different companies. I mean, our stuff's everywhere <laughs> yeah. for sure. And that's, what's neat. Like we talk about this with the, the people that take the tours with me and stuff like that. When I, I walk around, like, we well, they don't, they, first of all, they never realize how big we really are. And, and we don't, I don't even want to talk, talk like that, but it's more about who, and what you may see along yeah. the tour, like I didn't know you made parts for exactly. that group or yeah. this company, and yeah. that company said this, and like, well, that's yeah. the same company that's buying this. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? It's like, it's you know, I mean, so it's just crazy how many businesses rely on Ampi. I mean, like just all the engine boats. We supply a lot of engine parts. I mean, from engine cases to cranks to rods. I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there that comes from Ampi that people don't realize. Thousands of SKUs. The uh, Misty, so Misty, can I chime in? Can you have someone start making stingers in house so we could fill our customers? We did. I had A1 actually make them. Old Tiger made a few for us to keep us going, and he can't keep up, man. Every time I order 50, it's too much. <laughs> but I mean, I, I, I had to have Tiger make stingers just to get our uh, merge exhaust out the door. I mean, we were trying. Maybe Big Bad John will step up. Hey, Big Bad. Hey. Nah, but if I give him the dimensions on that stinger, he might give it to Lizard, and Lizard's going to pick up three horsepower, and <laughs> you never know. Man. Always racing. <clears throat> big bad john but uh you know we're trying i mean it's a hey, it's, big we, bad we, where's he at, john? I, I don't see my mind maybe on yours yeah but if big bad builds me a new header i might actually make some more power I i've been know. running the same borrowed header from the gas man for three years <laughs> sidewinder oh man man can you Aaron, imagine Aaron Ritter a conventional What's up? header on that car Dude, i'm going that fast with a sidewinder who That's... drag races with a sidewinder you <laughs> There's not very really luckily the there's no drag racing. Class, so I don't need to try very hard, you know. <laughs> Here we go. We're gonna close out with a shit stirring pot and then throw oh, the fire man. bomb out Molotov out, and then he's gone. But uh, but no, I mean on on the real note, guys. I mean, we do we wake up here, we come to battle every single day, um, you know, right, wrong, or indifferent to you know, bring you guys the best products we can. Right, we're trying like crazy, man. I was going through the new products, the wasp, I mean, there's so much stuff we've done in the last couple of years. I mean, there's I think we what over three million dollars in new products, yeah. Down here. You know, and that's that's saying something. Bad, I mean, that's more than what we've ever done, and we do get so much more stuff in the works, and we're just excited. And that's the, the, the some of the stuff that I don't ever want it to get misconstrued either. Like, oh, we're we're gloating or bragging. So, no, dude, we get excited because yeah. it's like cool shit that you know when you and I were building cars younger, like, we struggled to find stuff, or some yeah. stuff was even easier to find now, and it's like you can't get it. It's like now we're able to actually dictate what's going to happen for the future of the company and and hopefully the legacy. And uh, it's awesome, man. So we, we love hanging out with you guys, man. It's been an hour Keep and a half show. Flowing. You know, let your salespeople know they can come to me and uh, we'll make it happen.
it happen. Yeah. I mean, I have access to the MP Instagram. Corey has the Facebook and the Instagram. So anything that comes through, we see it. Yep. So if you guys have a have a need, want, request, you know, drop me, drop me a DM, send it to it, and then uh um you know, we're, 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 we're jotting them down. I mean, we bring it again, we meet twice a week specifically on new product and the future of the company and what we want to bring. So, uh, we'd love to hear it and keep them coming. I mean, no, no idea is a stupid idea. And it's just, even if it's not made this year, it may be made three years now, but it all gets put away in the vault. Exactly. So dude, thanks for hanging out. I mean, I get to shoot the shit with you all the time and and talk crap to you. A little bit of time (laughs) on the air here and let people know what's going on. You know, shout out your kids. My kids, yeah, I they're watching. Well, just for later, Jacob and Jesse, yeah, they're probably at home. I'll show them the video later. They're uh, having a great time with this COVID, you know, with all this homeschool nonsense. But oh, god, get don't, a even, kick don't out even get, get me a started. kick out of uh, watching dad on the old podcast, you know. Darren, is that an open invite to Johnson Valley this weekend? If the razor's washed and cleaned up, I'm down to come up on a Saturday. Can Am's ready, down to come up Saturday, Saturday. All right. So anyhow, guys, thank you so much for making this just a cool episode. Jesse, thanks for hanging out with us well, and talking some shit to uh, Wink and how you drug him out. I guess so, something I don't know. Well, Wink's never beat me down the track. <laughs> Let's establish that I had to close right this now. shit okay. the way out the show. Stir that up because he hasn't come by. Bring that freaking <laughs> Class 11 street bug by, man. I want to check it out. I think it looks cool, and I, I want to I'll go. give Wink his props, man. He got Herbie running pretty good there towards the end. So. Yep. Yeah, now he's yeah. on the non on some new ventures with Novas and, and yeah, we all got to do that, man. Like I said, I get burned out on things too. That's why I'm not putting the sand and doing my thing. So it's a break. Got to, man. Too much of one thing is not good. I mean, so. I think too for me. I mean, not to end, keep the show going, but it's a little different for guys like us. I mean, we're here every day doing this. So for me to be here every day, then go home and work on the race car for another four hours, six hours. I mean, it gets a little, a little monotonous. Mm-hmm. You know, it's your hobby. It's one thing but when you live it and work at it. It's a little bit more. Yeah, that's where like the new cars are are now a commitment that has yeah. to be fulfilled and it's like uh yeah, it and it's just table well, just there's so much stuff with the catalogs yeah. and everything else it takes a little bit so we're all working our butt we're rolling off. it anyways we'll it thanks for hanging out with us guys we'll see you next tuesday lots to probably cover and go over a lot of stuff coming down the pipeline it'll be a short show because we're going into the final race of the year rage at the river which is now rage at prim has <laughs> been moved from laughlin to there and we're going to battle for a championship in class 11 We've got our other teammates in the 516, the Negrete family. We've got the nine car, and we've got uh, our ace in the whole Wilkie. Yeah, got Wilkie ready to go, hopefully battle. And we've got Andy Derviselli from Major Performance going to hang out and pit with us this weekend, too. Shout out to Andy and all the stuff he's been working on. I'll probably show up there. And then uh, we're going to hang out with the old Fast Jesse up there as well. I'll so show up with the old Can-Am. Look forward to seeing it. Anyways, guys, we'll check you next week. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. Please like, share, comment, post it on Facebook. One last show. I'm going to show you something really cool. For those of you guys that dig the vintage stuff, I've been meaning to show you this for like two weeks, and I'm going to put this little picture over the face. But this dude up in Northern California uh, made these. These are 164 Hot Wheels, and uh, he, he 3D printed the wheels himself. He did the decals himself. And to enter this, and they actually do a, like a, a, a Hot Wheels SEMA show, and this this setup uh, did very very well. And I just thought I had to share it with you guys. I think it's super cool, and love to see this whole little garage setup that he did. And uh, big shout out to that dude, Pacific Northwest Customs. Check him out on IG. PW Customs uh, does a bunch of little Hot Wheels things, and he does all the stuff himself. So very cool. Been meaning to share it, and I think it's awesome. Uh, we'll catch you guys next week. See you. See you guys.